Hi Danielle, Hi. welcome back. It is magic to see the two boys again. I remember them when they were here at their six week check yeah. and they've just grown so much yeah. since then. Are they doing well? They're doing really well, loving their food. That's great. No problems with the first set of vaccines at six weeks? None whatsoever. No. Great. Do you have any questions at the moment? My friend saw the movie Vaxxed and told me that uh, vaccinations can be linked to autism. Is this correct? When the stories first came out about autism and MMR vaccine, we were very worried. I mean, we knew measles is a really nasty disease we needed to protect against, but we didn't want children getting autism mm -hmm. trying to protect them against measles. And so we commissioned lots of studies around the world. Uh, the biggest one was in Denmark. They looked at half a million children who'd had vaccine and hadn't had vaccine, and they found that the autism rate was the same in both. And there were nine other studies from WHO and CDC and others. And so in the end, we had one and a half million children, and they had the same autism rates whether they were vaccinated or not. Mm -hmm. So we knew there wasn't a relationship between the two. This came out first with a couple of really badly designed studies that suggested there was a link. And the one that got most play, the UK study by Waitfield, there were only 12 children and the data wasn't strong and some of it was made up. And in the end, the journal retracted the article. What causes autism? We know that autism rates have been going up. We're not really sure what causes autism. We think there's a combination of genetics and some environmental factors and, and, you know, so we don't really know why. We know it's being diagnosed more often. One of the interesting things was after the link, supposed link, was seen in England, that a lot of people stopped vaccinating their children. There were massive outbreaks of measles in England and the autism rate kept going up. So as the MMR rate went down, it didn't change the autism rate. Mm. So we're really confident that this MMR is a very safe vaccine. It's safe as a combination and that it doesn't cause autism and no vaccines cause autism. My babies are getting a lot of vaccines early in life. Should we split those up so that the immune system is not overwhelmed? We do a lot of studies uh, in deciding when to give vaccines to babies at what age and how many of them. We know that some of the diseases are very bad very early in life. And so particularly things like uh, measles and whooping cough um, are actually fatal for young babies, very young babies. So we know we have to give those vaccines early in life. And we also know that the baby's got a special immune system when they're young because they're meeting lots and lots of new experiences and antigens and foods and everything. And so it's designed to produce a really good response early in the baby's life. It's important not to delay vaccines. The amount of antigens they're getting in vaccines is very small compared to the old vaccines we used to use. And we need to make sure that they're protected as early as possible. So if we delay vaccines, then they're at risk of getting the disease, which is much, much worse. We know that in many of the neighbouring countries they can't afford the sort of vaccine programs we have. And so we know places like the Philippines and that have very large numbers of measles each year. What's happening is that there's a lot more travel and even though we've got rid of most of the measles from within Australia, we see a lot of cases that come in from overseas and then place children at risk. So if your children aren't vaccinated, they stand a chance of getting a disease in a supermarket or just any other common area. So it's important not to delay and it's important to make sure that they have all of their vaccines on time. Is it better to get a disease than a stronger response? Back many years ago, people used to feel that um, getting the disease gave you a better response and that you were better off having disease than getting vaccinated. And people had measles parties and chickenpox parties in their neighbourhoods. Somebody would get sick everybody would bring their child over to make sure that they had it. And part of it was a feeling that if your child got one of these diseases early, they'd respond better and that they'd be all right. But what people forget is that some people with measles get measles of the brain or get measles pneumonia. Children die 
of measles and children have long-term consequences. You know, they have brain damage that's then with them for the rest of their life. And so we think it's really important to have the soft option to get the vaccine rather than getting measles or whooping cough itself. And we lose babies every year to those diseases in Australia. So it's critical that we don't get disease, but that we try and actually get the vaccine for all of our children. How do vaccines work? Vaccines work by putting a little bit of protein or antigen into the body. We don't want to put the actual disease into the body because then they're going to get sick. But we know that if we smash the virus up or take a little bit of protein from the bacteria, the body will recognise the protein and then it will make antibodies. And then when the actual bug itself turns up, it's already got antibodies to fight it off so that the babies are protected. For an example, with the flu vaccine that we give children, there's a couple of little protein bumps right on top of the virus, and we take those two protein bumps, and that's all the vaccine is. So they can't get sick from the vaccine, but their body makes a response to that to make sure. Are vaccines safe, and how are they tested? We know vaccines are safe. We have an enormous process before we ever let a vaccine company onto the market. They start with studies actually in animals, not even in humans, just to make sure that there's some safety. And then the first set of trials is only about 20 people, and they're really looking to see whether the vaccine's going to be safe. Uh, that's called phase one. And then a phase two trial, they look at um, about 200 people, again, looking to make sure that they're safe. And if they pass those steps, then we do a big trial. And that does two things. It looks to make sure they're safe, but also looks to make sure they work and that it's actually worth doing the vaccine. And if they pass all those steps, and this takes tens and tens of millions of dollars for the studies, then they can apply for licensing. But even then, we know that some very rare complications may not be shown up in the trials. So we have ongoing monitoring of all of our vaccines, and we try and make sure that um, parents who've had a reaction, the children who've had a reaction, contact us to tell us what's been going on. And so we can tell and see if things, and we also check to see if the vaccines are working. We do know that most vaccines have mild side effects. You know, your children can get a mild fever, they can get a sore arm, they can get a bit of redness. It's much better than getting the disease itself. Once in a blue moon, one of the vaccines is not uh, made well. And we had that problem about a decade ago in Australia with one of the flu vaccines. And children started getting very high fevers and started fitting. But we found that very early on, the vaccine was withdrawn. It's not allowed to be given in Australia anymore. And it was just the manufacturing process at that point. So we don't stop checking for safety once the vaccine's there. We just keep doing this the whole time. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other questions that that you're worried about with the babies at this stage? No, I think that you've answered right. all of my okay. questions.